Hey Bayek, it's me Ian. and in today's video, well, I'm looking at this. This is Robbery from 1967. This was another of the films that uh, Tony sent to me um, through Amazon. And um, i say thanks again, Tony. This has been a real pleasure to watch this film again. In many ways, it's like revisiting um, parts of my sort of uh, childhood because I do remember watching this film on the TV and um, we thoroughly enjoyed it. It was one of those films where we all sat around as a family watching it and um, fantastic film. Um, and uh, we'll have a look into it. Yes. So this um, is... 114 minutes long which is quite a, a nice length um and to be honest the film just sailed by the way it's all structured in the film everything about it just works so well the build up to the robbery and then um of course the actual aftermath of the robbery that's all brilliantly put here in the film in front of you as a story fantastic and of course it's actually based on a true story um the great train robbery as it was known which was a massive 1960s crime story it really was it dominated and still does to some ex uh, extent the mythology behind it has grown over the years with the leader um, ronnie biggs and it's 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 very much uh, one of those stories which has carried on throughout the years. Now, if we look at uh, Rotten Tomatoes, it's eighty percent, which I suppose isn't bad for them. But I, I've got a feeling when I look at this film, and I think it's suggested in many places, it was a it was a box office success. Um, the critics at the time really enjoyed it, but over recent years, there's been sort of more people saying, well, maybe it wasn't quite as good as we thought. I think they start looking at other films, other comparisons, and they shouldn't, they, they've in many ways taken it out of context of what we're actually looking at in the film. Anyhow, let's get down to it. It's written by um, Edward Boyd, Peter Yates, um, the director, and George Markstein, three writers. Now, um, the problem for the script, it was based on um, The Robber's Tale um, by uh, Pet Petter Fordham. Um, but they had to be so careful in this script. They were worried about the legal action that could take place. There was still a lot going on in terms of court and the, of the actual uh, robbery. So for, for, for obviously, it was called robbery, not the great train robbery, which is important um, because they, they were really seriously worried um, about all that. And they say the script was very much scrutinized looked at and they had to do their best to fictionalize aspects of this too um as well as putting in the uh, based on the true story so that's an interesting point to look at now um they the producers involved were in fact stanley baker and michael delaney um Sorry, Michael Dealey. Michael Dealey. They had a company called um, Oakhurst Productions. Now, they had been involved in Zulu um, producing that, which is, you know, the film we'll talk about a little bit. Um, but they got behind this project. And, of course, it was natural that Stanley Baker would take the leading role in the film, which he did. Now, let's just talk about the director. The director was P. 
Peter Yates. Peter Yates had a wonderful career in TV and in films. The f I think the most important part we'll talk about is Bullet. He directed Bullet, 1968, starring Steve McQueen. Now, it's said that Steve McQueen and the producers of the American film wanted Peter Yates on the strength, yes, of this film, the car chase, particularly at the beginning, they were so impressed with, they wanted this. And, of course, Bullet is one of the films which has... The, the car chasers, which are considered iconic, which are everybody looks up, up to and says the greatest car chasers in the film. There's a lovely piece of um, history linking it all up. And now um, P.D. Yates in this British film, there you are. Uh, he also um, had a Hollywood um, stint as well. I suppose that would be because of um, Bullet. Um, he did The Deep, which I think is a very interesting film from 1977. And he did Crawl, 1983, and some others. Those are just two I popped out. Yes, <laughs> now, um, let's talk a bit about the uh, filming. There's a lot. Um, I mean, the film on location, this, this film really is... It makes the film so stronger um, by looking at all the various locations. There's a lot in central London, um, which really adds to it. I love that, seeing London of this period in the 60s. That we've got the football match, Leighton Orient Football uh, Club, playing Swindon Town. That, that's a really nice scene. Then we've got the other important part, which is R.E.F. Uh, Gravely, where um, they do, you know, the major scenes with the aftermath of the robbery when they're sorting all the money out and, uh, you know, all what happens. Um, I don't want to say too much, but there you are. Uh, we've got that. And then there, are, there were scenes filmed in New York Harbour, which are in the film. There was originally, of course, talk that they were going to extend this to an American connection. They wanted American um, uh, sort of, um, well, for marketing purposes, let's put it down there, get Jason Robard in. Apparently they did some filming for an American gangster kind of thing, but they decided in the end they scrapped all that. But we've got the scene at the end with the New York Harbour and uh, the New York is a nice thing. Also, there were some scenes um, um, in prison filmed in uh, Ireland as well. So it's got a, quite a massive location. Um, le let me see. Let's look at the cast. Of course, we start, we'll talk about Stanley Baker. Stanley Baker, the more you read about Stanley Baker, the more I really admire him. He also was a friend of Richard Burton. They were both Welsh lads from the coal mines, if you want to put it like that, who came up and did such tremendous work in theatre and um, some great films as well. Um, fantastic. Um, and it seems to me that Stanley Baker crammed a lot in his life because sadly he died when he was... 48, which is really young, um, and uh, he'd been knighted as well, and he died of lung cancer. He was a heavy smoker and all that, which is sad. Um, but of course, he was a producer, and he did so many roles that we don't say, well, we'll just talk about. Uh, Guns of Navarone, he was in that, but Zulu was the one, the iconic Zulu film, such an important British film. Um, now, he was, of course, starring in it, but he was also involved in the production of it. That's from 1964. And then he was in, this is the bit I like, in, in so many different films, but he um, went to Italy. He was involved in um, A Lizard in a Woman's Skin, which is a full shit, a giallo, um, gialli, oh, there we are, gialli film, 
uh, same as the Butterfly Affair. I think that's fantastic. I love that, the fact that he was involved in this kind of film. That's great. But it's such a career. And there's a really good interview extract that they've managed to piece together uh, on the DVD. And it's fantastic. Love it. Right. Um, next in the cast, we've got Joanna Pettit playing Kate Clifton, uh, his wife. It's not a massive role, but it's an effective role. She was in Casino Royale, 967, and uh, she was in a, a horror film called The Evil. Cry Demon was known as an House of Evil from 1978. Then we got James Booth, who played the Inspector George Langdon. He was in Zulu. Well, there we are. There's a lot of links with Zulu. Um... Then we've got Revenge, which we've talked about here before on the channel. Joan Collins is in that, of course, 1971. And this is what I found interesting. He was in Airport 77 from 1977. Those disaster movies, remember those, yes. And then we've got um, Frank Finley playing Robinson. What an actor he is. A lot of TV stuff, but... He was in Cromwell, which I always love to talk about. Assault, again, 1971. And Life Force. If you're in Life Force, that's it. You're made for me. I love Life Force. Then we've got Barry Foster as Frank. Frank. Um, Barry Foster, he was in Frenzy, the Hitchcock classic. Yes, a Hitchcock classic. I remember him as the... He's great as the real psychotic villain in that. Wow. Um, then we, he was in a film that I rather like. It's a period piece, but it's uh, a Julie Christie film, which is Heat and Dust from 1983. What a beautiful film that is. And he was, of course, famous for TV series Van der Volk. Then we've got George Sewell, another face. You're in, so many faces you recognise in this film. George Sewell, he played Ben... He was in um, The Vengeance of She, 1968, the Hammer film. He was in the Tygon film, The Haunted House of Horror, from 1969. He was in Get Carter. Yes, I remember him in Get Carter, 1971. But then I, in terms of TV, I remember him as in UFO, the brilliant Jerry Anderson show. And in TV as well, I remember him as uh, in Special Branch, which was another... Cop show which ran quite, I think, from 1973 to 74. Fantastic. Then we uh, another face, Glyn Edwards. He played the squad chief. He was in Zulu. Yes, see, so many links with Zulu, isn't it? He also was in a film that I really like, um, Fragment of Fear, 1970, which uh, may be coming up on this channel in not too distant future. Uh, get Carter. Wow, he was in that. So, there's the film. Well, what is it about? I've told you what it's about. It's about the great train robbery, and it's done so well. Everything, the set pieces, it's all put together beautifully. I think my only criticism, and I don't like criticising films too much, but I, I can understand why. Because of the script problems in terms of... um. Uh, you know, the worry about the legal action that could take place and they had to fictionalise it. I think sometimes it perhaps does lack some sort of emotional depth into the characters because they couldn't do it. They weren't allowed to do it and therefore you have certain things. But it doesn't matter in this kind of film because we're looking to tell the story and look at it like that and it works well. The actors all do a great job in what they're given and you've got a, such an ensemble cast. It's fantastic. And it fits so well into the whole tradition of British crime films. This is a great film. It is for what it's put together. And it's got a lot of personal nostalgic reasons why I absolutely love it. And I say, I just think it's great. Now, um, it got a um, 2015 release uh, on network. And here it is. So two disc. We've got two disc because um, the thing is, the wonderful thing about it is on the two discs 
is, um, well, I absolutely think it's fantastic. Um, the two discs, um, we've got um, all the extras on this second disc, and then the film. The film is fantastic. Ah, oh, man, the extras, wonderful. The quality of the print, brilliant. I love it. Um, I can't recommend it enough. And there's a booklet. There's a booklet in here as well. Look, two discs, fantastic. And that's it. Well, I hope you've enjoyed um, the... Uh, uh, well, I really do. I hope you've enjoyed this. I've enjoyed it. And thank you so much. Um, now, um, if you're new to the channel, <laughs> please subscribe. And um, it would, I really appreciate that. I really do if you do subscribe. And I hope you've enjoyed it and see what else I do on the channel. Also, if you give it a like, please, it helps with all the algorithms and all that sort of stuff. It'd be great, fantastic. And hopefully more people will enjoy it. If you've got any comments, please put the comments down and I'll answer them. And I love hearing from them. And thanks again, Tony, for all this. It is so fantastic. And that's it. I've gone on too much. But there we are. Love this film. All I've got to say is, I'll see thee, I'll see thee again. <laughs>